Shalom everybody, hope you're doing well, hope your week was great, getting ready for Shabbat. You can see the sun starting to descend behind me in the sky here in Eretz Israel. And with Shabbat we hope that we're able to see the world with Shabbat eyes, with the eyes of Mashiach, and understand the world a little bit better. See the light in all the darkness that uh, seems to be descending into our world of late, in these past few weeks in the summertime. And we hope to be able to see where it's all going and how it all fits into the divine plan. We don't always understand in the moment, but uh, we hope one day in the future that we'll have that clarity, that we'll gain that clarity, that we'll achieve that perception of the world. And it connects to this week's Torah portion because this week's Torah portion is Parshat Maseh. And Ele Maseh B'nai Israel. These are the journeys of the Jewish people. And we know that the Jewish people journeyed throughout the Midbar, the wilderness, the desert for 40 years before they were able to get into Eretz Israel. And in this week's Torah portion, all the stops, all the places that B'nai Israel went to, camped in, stopped in, and then moved on from, are enumerated here in this week's Torah portion. All 42 stops. And we learned something very interesting that some of the stops are there for a brief moment, and others for a much longer moment, sometimes even many, many years. And we might have talked about this last year when we got to this Torah portion, but we can learn from this that sometimes there's this places in life we just need to be for a second, for a few moments to, to, to understand something better about ourselves or the world, to, to meet somebody, to learn something, to experience something, and then we're ready to move on. Other places we need to dig deeper, we need to spend more time there to gain a, a better understanding of, of the reality in which we live. And every place that we go teaches us something new, teaches us something different that is vital for our life path. And what I want to talk about this year and this week, connected to this week's Torah portion, Maaseh, is the following. So we learned 42 is the number of journeys. And the Baal Shem Tov says that this parallels the 42 journeys that every single person goes through in his or her life. And on some level, if we can look at a person's life, that there's 42 stops, 42 places, 42 journeys. We don't always understand what a journey means, but there's 42 of these journeys that the person goes through in their life. Right? And later on in the Parsha, we also learn about the Ari Miklat, the cities of refuge, and then the Ari Levi'im, the cities of the, of the Levites. And we learned something very interesting, that there are 42 of these cities that belong to the Levites, right? all scattered throughout the land. So we have these 42 journeys, we have these 42 cities belonging to the Levites. We know from the tribe of Levi comes the Kohanim, the ones who work in the Beit HaMikdash, the ones who are the conduits, the vessels, the, the, the medium, so to speak, between heaven and earth, between us and the upper worlds. And we also know that they're, they're the teachers. They're the teachers of the Torah. They're the, the giver, giver overs of the tradition. And so these 42 journeys, which are meant to teach us everything we need to know in life, these 42 cities, which house the people who are the teachers, to help us understand this world that we live in, I believe are very, very connected. And on top of that, we learn that these six cities of refuge. And all together, the Torah tells us explicitly that the six cities of refuge, which also were homes for the living, and plus the 42 um, enumerated cities of, of the Levites equals 48. And the Torah tells us in total there's 48 of these cities. That's connected to also the number 48 uh, uh, teaching in Perki Avot in the 6th sixth, sixth sixth chapter that tells us that Torah is acquired in 48 different ways. 48 different ways Torah is acquired. So we see lots of connections with numbers, with the 42 journeys, the 48 cities, the 48 ways of, of, of acquiring Torah. And I think one thing that we can extract from this and apply to our lives is that everywhere we go there's something to learn. Everywhere we go there's Torah. We learn in the, in the Gemara that if the Torah was never given on Har Sinai that we'd be able to learn the Torah from the world, from our lives. We hear incredible stories of Hasidic Rebbe's, especially Rebbe Zush and his brother, Rebbe Elimelech, who went for years on the road in, in a self-imposed exile to learn Torah from the world. After spending many, many years in the Beit Midrash, they were ready to learn Torah from the world. Every single moment, every single day, Every place that we go, every place that we leave, every place that we are, has something to teach us on the level of Torah. And what is the Torah? It's, it's basically instructions on how to live. It's, it's what God wants from us. It's, it's divine will. What is God saying to me in this place? What is God saying to me in this moment? Like Rabbi Shlomo would say that so many times. Really the, the highest level on which we can live. What do you want from me right now, God? What is it that I'm supposed to do right now, in this very moment? So, I just want to send a blessing out to our Chayalim, our soldiers, who in this very moment our mom is standing on the board with Gaza, inside Gaza, fighting 
fighting for their lives, fighting for the lives of the Jewish people. Not only the Jews in Eretz Yisrael, but for the Jews all over the world. And this is a fight that is not just local, it's not just about one terror organization, it's really uh, the fight against evil, it's the fight against darkness. And we bless and we pray for our soldiers that, that they're given the, the strength. And I know they have the strength, and I know they have the passion, and they have the command, the amazing stories are coming out about them praying before and wearing seat seat and, 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 and dancing and singing before they go into war, knowing what they're doing. They mom, their mom is carrying all of Am Yisrael on their shoulders. And they also know that all of Am Yisrael is right behind them. And so even if we're not fighting on the front lines, we're, we're mamish with them, we're with the soldiers. This is a fight, this is a battle that we're all part of. And, and we should be blessed to find our way of helping out our part in this. War is such an ugly word, but Rav Cook talks about war, that sometimes war is necessary. Right? Oftentimes, war is necessary. If war is happening, it means it's necessary in order to, to shift the world in, in a different direction and really bring divine will into the world. So we should be blessed with a quick but efficient and complete end to this war and a restoration of peace and calm in Eretz Israel to all the Jews here and abroad and really understand what it is God wants from us in every single moment. Shabbat Shalom from the land. All the best. Shabbat Shalom.